Hey yo, Spaghetto here, and welcome back to another moment with you, episode 2. Today we're gonna be finishing the mod. <laughs> Hooray. I'm very excited to be finishing this. I've been very uh, busy lately, so videos have been a bit slow on my end, but I do apologize for that. But without further ado, let's get back to this mod before uh, I get killed, I don't know. Alright, so we were here with Monica on the beach. My theories were... She has a boyfriend. Somebody died. She's pregnant. Or she stubbed her toe. Okay, I'm honestly leaning more towards she stubbed her toe because judging by her torso size, she doesn't look too pregnant to me. But, without further ado, let's get into this. I also just talked to Dinobot, the, the creator, a couple of minutes ago. He said that the stubbing toe scene was very emotional. So, let's, let's see how crazy emotional it is. <clears throat> Also, did I mention I really like this background? It's really pretty. Like, okay, anyways. Monica? She turns to face me. Sure enough, it's Monica. I mean, she's already facing us, but okay. At first, she looks surprised. Maybe even afraid when she notices she isn't alone on the beach. But when we make eye contact, her expression warms and, warms and a smile spreads across her face. Noodle boy? <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, it's been a long day with the festival preparations and all, so I just felt like a walk might calm me down. Monica chuckles a little. <laughs> oh? I hope Sayori and Yuri weren't too much for you to handle. <laughs> of course not. Everything went smoothly. I'm lying through my teeth, of course. But something in Monica's eyes tells me she doesn't need to be burdened with any of my troubles. I can't put my finger on it, but she almost looks... sad. I didn't know Monica could be sad. I thought she didn't have a heart, but okay. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. I'm really sorry you got saddled with all the festival prep this weekend, Noodle Boy. Uh, it's alright. I don't mind at all. At least I, I wouldn't under normal circumstances. We stand there looking at each other for a moment, serenaded by the sounds of the waves. Well, it's getting late, and you know me, I have a bedtime of 6 p.m., so I better get home. I guess I should be on my way, though. Actually, would you mind sitting here with me for a while? I could really use a friend. This is sudden. How could I refuse? She's an incredibly cute girl. W well, sure. Uh, is everything alright? Let's just say it's been a trying weekend for me. Well, that makes two of us. Monica sits down on the beach and pulls her knees up to her face. She stares out toward the ocean like she's looking into another world. I sit down next to her and stare out into the ocean myself. We don't say anything for a while, but I get the impression Monica needs the company more than she needs the words. I don't know what is going on with her, but I guess she'll tell me in her own time. I come here to look at the ocean. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what most people do at the beach. And this is kind of cool, I was at the beach like last week, so that's neat. The sudden break in silence surprises me. Oh, uh, really? The smoothest response, but I was off guard. Not the smoothest response, but I was off guard. The ocean, it makes me think of many things. Like exit music. <laughs> Monica continues as if she's never said. Monica. Okay. Monica continues as if I hadn't even said anything. The myriad of wonders contained within it. The lands beyond it. What do you think the first explorers thought when they first attempted to cross the ocean? I get the feeling I'm hearing a variety of things that Monica has thought, but never said out loud. It must have been an exciting time. The wonder and mystery of it all. <laughs> in, our modern, in our modern world, the ocean is such an easy thing to traverse. <laughs> by plane or by ship. But in those days, oceans were... The ocean was so vast, it was this insurmountable thing. 
just an endless obstacle. Almost like the distance between two yearning hearts. Wouldn't you agree? It almost sounds like you're missing someone, Monica. My response seems to surprise her. Oh, <laughs> you're not as dense as I thought you were. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, the others have this theory that you have some secret lover. <laughs> My theory, of course, is that you're pregnant or you stubbed your toe. But I think you stubbed your toe because, judging by this, I can't see your feet. So, that doesn't exactly deny my theory. <laughs> Sayori is convinced that you're planning to run off and elope. And that wouldn't happen to be what's going on with you, is it? Eh, this was not the moment to be joking, Noodle Boy. Oh, okay, never mind, she laughed. Phew. <laughs> Well, I didn't intend for it to be that funny, but it seems to have snapped her out of the mood. I don't have a boyfriend, Noodle Boy. I wish I did. In fact, I've never had a boyfriend. I've never even been kissed. Well, dang. That's sad. I understand, Monica, though. I've never had a boyfriend either. And I've never been kissed either, so I'm not quite sure what it's like. Really? I find that hard to believe. Oh? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Uh-oh. Well, um, I didn't mean... <laughs> um... <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm just teasing you. You're so easy to get worked up, you know. I realize I'm popular with the guys, but I've never really had time for a relationship like that or to find one that's worth the relationship at all. But I'm actually not very good at relationships in general myself, so my family moved around a lot when I was younger. I never had the same set of friends from year to year. Gosh dang it. Uh, you know, this hurts because it was the same thing for me. I moved like at least 10 times now and it's, it's really hard being ripped apart um, each time and not having any roots with people. And eventually, after each move, you kind of just give up and stop making friends and don't see any point in trying anymore. And when you get to that point, you really do just feel alone. And it's, it's really hard. So I guess I never really learned how to hold on to a long-term friendship. Instead, I just focused on my studies and my writing. I knew that I would have those, no matter where I went. Wow. I never knew that about you, Monica. I'm so sorry. Monica smiles at me. Don't be sorry for me, Noodle Boy. I know I miss out on some things, but I have no regrets about the life I've led. I've made me into who I am. Well, I'm glad you're here now, at any rate. A wistful look passes over Monica's face. Yeah, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad to be here. Anyways, it's getting late. You should probably head back to your house. Yeah, you're right. It's way past 6 p.m. I should go. Do you wanna, do you, do you want me to walk you back to your house? No. I don't live far from here. I'll head home in a few minutes. But I appreciate the gesture all the same. Well, alright then. It was nice talking to you. We both stand there. Uh, we both stand and I turn to leave. Noodle boy? Uh, yeah, Monica? Thank you. Just for sitting and talking to you? Yeah. Thank you. This is exactly what I needed right now. You've helped me a lot. More than you know. Well, um, I, I'm glad to always be a service. ka -chow. <laughs> Monica smiles at me one last time, and I turn and I head down the road, and it'll take me back to my house. Man. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Click. Uh. Hello? 
Yeah, yes, I knew you'd call. Look, I I'm sorry that I stormed out like that. I, I, I really appreciate this, but it's so much. So, is Monica having problems with her parents? I just... I just needed to clear my head. Don't worry, I'm just down at the beach. In fact, I just ran into somebody. Who? <laughs> His name's Noodle Boy. He, he's very wiggly. He's, uh, a friend from school. Anyway, I'll come home now. We have a lot we need to discuss. It sounds like her parents, possibly, or a sibling. I, I, I love you too. Click. Wow, okay. And we're not, yep, we're not gonna get any resolve. Or It's the day of the festival, guys. Who's ready to gently open some doors? <laughs> I want to know what happens. Monica, are you alive? Did you stub your toe? I need to know. Okay, I need to know. Show me your feet right now. Okay, take off your socks and show me your feet. <laughs> Noodle boy, where are you? Um, Yuri, are you going to deliver your final poem? You've only been up there twice today and your delivery is amazing. You really represent the literature club well. I think everyone is impressed with how articulate you are. But things are winding down and you really need to give one last performance. Monica, I... I can't. I'm waiting for Noodle Boy. He needs to be here for my final poem. I... I want him to hear it. Yuri, I don't know if Noodle Boy is going to make it. What? Why... why not? Well... Something came up... with Sayori. Sayori! Ah! How dare she monopolize his time! She should be helping us at the festival. Instead, she spirited Noodle Boy away, like some sort of siren. I, I know you're upset, Yuri, but you really shouldn't be so hard on Sayori. Especially not today. Humph. Well, next time I see her, I plan on giving her a piece of my mind. I, seerly, I sincerely hope you do not, Yuri. Don't you dare. <laughs> the more you know, though. Oh! <laughs> there he is! Ah, oh, Noodle Boy. <laughs> Yuri, you stop that! You get that crazy Yandere look right off your face before I smack it off it! You purple-haired female dog. Urgh. Stop being Henri, okay? Sayori just tried to kill herself, and you're worried about Noodle Boy reading your poems. I mean, you're ignorant and you don't know, but... Urgh. Sorry. Now and forever. Monica, I'm ready. All right, uh, break a leg, Yuri, before I break your leg. Noodle boy, over here. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad you decided to stop by and learn more about our little club. As you know, we're holding a poetry reading today. While I've recited a few of my own, I've been waiting for the right time to recite this one. Poetry is a window, and Noodle Boy is the only window I want to look through. A window that allows you to t look deep into the soul of a person. The act of writing a poem is personal, even an intimate experience. I once considered the possibility of sharing that experience obscene. But now, because of one person, I've been inspired to share a piece of myself with all of you. So come gather around this table and eat me alive like pie. As I am a very private person, it's been very difficult for me, but this person has inspired me to become more than I thought I could be. I have written this poem especially for you. I pray that it might mean as much to you as it does to me. Oh no. Mm. Ah, this is not well. This is not well. Okay, she opened her mouth to say something, but the look on my face told her everything she needed to know. She walked past the crowd of people and straight to me. The 
The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A long figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I am too late. He steps into the streetlight, and I gasp, and I drop my umbrella. The light flickers, and my heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of, a m of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? She put her arms around me and held me close to her. I couldn't raise my arms to hug her back. I was utterly drained and defeated. Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand, and the flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. Like my envy, my heart is a... Ah! Uh, my, my... My heart! Um, let me guess. She just looked up and saw Monica hugging Sir Noodle Boy. Um, s suddenly, I suddenly realize the room is silent. I glance up at Yuri, confused. Her eyes are fixed on me, and Monica. It takes me, <laughs> it takes me a moment, but I realize what she's seeing. And her face tells me exactly what she's thinking. The crowd notices the abrupt end of Yuri's poem. Uh, what's going on? Why did she stop? Oh, gosh. You get out of here! Leave! Before I make you! Boy! Noodle Boy's about to throw some hands, okay? These fists are rated E for everyone, so come on, step it up! Mother trucker. Urgh! Hi, is there more? <laughs> you can stand there as long as you want. I like looking at you, babe. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, cutie. You, see, you seem so tense. I want me to relieve some of the tension. <laughs> you need something to calm you down. I want to borrow my pen. Oh, gosh. Why isn't Noodle Boy doing anything? <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to help. What did you call me, a shrimp? Shrimp? The only thing that you have that's shrimp is the thing between your freaking legs. So, buddy, I'm hardly the smallest thing in this room. <laughs> smallest, hey? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, for once, I like Natsuki. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Natsuki. Oh, jeez. I... I... I'm sorry, everyone. Yuri! Oh, no. Yuri. This is all my fault. I should go talk to her. No, Monica. I think I need to do it. Noodle Boy, are you sure? I mean, Sayori. No, it's fine. I think Yuri understands her feeling towards me better than I understand my feelings towards her. And maybe I should have respected that more. I don't know. But I think she'll listen to me more than she will than she will with you, Monica. Okay. Just be careful with her. <clears throat> when Yuri ran out of the club room, I saw her turn and head down the hallway in the opposite direction from the way I normally enter. I think this hallway is reserved for the honor students. I've never been down it. None of the clubs are using this hallway for the festival, so it's partially dark and deserted. 
Yuri. My mind wanders as I search for Yuri. I have so many unresolved feelings for each of the girls. I had never been popular, and suddenly finding myself at the center of attention of so many pretty girls. Well, it's all gone to my head, but at least it's made me feel pretty good, to be honest. It was really thrilling at first. It was kind of like being the star of my very own harem anime. Mm, that line makes me mad. That line makes me mad. Or a dating sim. But, as I spent time with them, I've learned more about who they are. And I found that I care about each of them deeply. And now I'm afraid that I've hurt Yuri, Yuri by simply knowing her. Just like Sayori. Ugh, dang it. I pushed, my, I pushed the thoughts of Sayori out of my head. I can't think about her now. I have to find Yuri. Yuri! Please, I just want to talk to you. As I turn yet another corner, I hear a soft voice nearby. I can't really make out the words. The only one I can hear clearly is stupid, and the voices definitely belong to Yuri. As I slowly move closer, I can hear muffled sobs between the quiet words. My heart sinks. I hesitate, and consider that maybe I should just leave her be. Perhaps it would be best if I just gave her space. But then, I suddenly think of Sayori again. No. Space isn't what she needs. I turn the corner slowly. Yuri, it's me. Listen, I really want to talk. Frick, man! You don't need to do that! Those stupid Five Nights at Freddy's sound effects. Jeez. I didn't expect the noise and it scared the living heck out of me. Ah! Yuri! You're... You're bleeding! And... And, ah! Yuri quickly pulls down her sleeve, hiding the bloody gashes on her arm. Ah! And that's where I'm ending this episode! Just kidding, just kidding, I'm finishing it. Needle boy, don't, don't look at me, please. I just, I just, no, don't look. I'm just too stunned to say anything. I never would have suspected. It's... It's alright, really. I'm fine. I really am. See? Smiles. <laughs> I think... I think in the back of my mind... I knew you wouldn't feel that way about me. But... You and Monica... I mean, she's wonderful, but I never expected it. You two make such a... Wonderful couple. Yuri. It's fine. It really is. You two go off and be happy. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Before I could say anything, Yuri turns around and runs away from me down the opposite hallway. Goodbye, Noodle Boy. Goodbye. The words echo in my mind, repeating over and over. First Yuri's voice, then it's Sayori's. The noise swells inside my head. A symphony of chaos and anger. I feel faint. I study myself. By putting my hand on the wall. Yuri. Sayori. Why? As her names mix with the horrid goodbyes adding to the misery inside my head, I find that by steadying my hand has balled into a fist. I punch my hand against the wall. Again. And again. Lightly at first. But stronger with each blow. Until my knuckles sear with pain. In a small spot on the wall, I have been punching now, bears the imprint of my fist. I want to scream. And I want to shout out. But in the end, all I can manage is a whimper. Why? Why am I cursed like this? Why must I hurt the people I love? Yuri. It's Yuri. I've caused you both so much pain. I slump on the floor in a crushed heap. And now, I lost you both on the same day. Alone with my self-loathing, I close my eyes, praying for a comfort that I know I won't find. That's the end, isn't it? It's, it's gonna end there. Oh wait, it didn't! Oh, thank heavens! If it ended there, 
I was about to swear at Dinobot in four languages. English, Italian, Taiwanese, and Italian with italics on it. Okay? Those four languages. What? What happened to Sayori? I opened my eyes. Yuri is standing there before me. I... I didn't see her this morning. I came to school anyway. And Monica found a note that she had written. A suicide note. Yuri gasps. Oh no. So I ran to her house. And I found her in her room. Hanging. Yuri covers her mouth with her hands as she has a realization comes to her face. She slowly lowers herself to the floor until she's on level with me while keeping some space between us. I... I got her down. Took her to the hospital. Now. Now. My voice quivers as it grows softer. I don't know if my friend is alive or dead. I begin to weep. For the first time today, tears stream down my face as a mass of emotions that he has carried finally catch up to me. Yuri sits silently and watches me. I'm slightly aware of her actions. She's moved her hand from her mouth and starts to reach for me, but hesitantly pulls back as if unsure what to do. I continue to cry for a few more moments while Yuri sits across from me, seemingly in a sort of stalemate with her own mind. After a while, I manage to compose myself slightly. I... I know how you feel about me, Yuri. I know you think I'm some kind of hero. Some tower of strength, like in your books. But I'm not. I'm not your hero. I'm not your white knight. I can't save you. I... I can't even save anyone. And I spread my arms slightly. This is all I am. Just a broken shell of a human being. I'm weak. Pathetic. And I'm, I'm beautiful. Nanny the Frick? What? Beautiful. You're, you're beautiful. You aren't a storybook hero. You aren't, a, you aren't a conquering warrior or an invincible knight. You're a regular person. You have limits. And today, I've watched you push yourself past those limits in the service of those you care about. You came, to, you came to the edge of what you could handle and then went further just because others needed you. And I think that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Again, she timidly reaches out her hand. She hesitates as if she's afraid to cross some unseen barrier that exists between us. Finally, she slowly stretches her arm out to rest of the way until her hand rests on mine. As she reaches towards me, her arm slides out of her sleeve, exposing her wounds. She didn't unbutton it when she pulled it down earlier, so it was just hanging loosely on her arm. She tenderly wraps her fingers around my hand. Her touch is soft and comforting. Oh, noodle boy, your hand... Yuri says this as I realize the dull pain coming from my left hand for the first time. Yuri turns my hand over her and spreads it out flat. There are several small glass shards embedded in my palm. I realize they came from Sayori's glass butterfly when I smashed it on her desk. I'm now bleeding from the wounds. I must have pushed the shards in deeper with my clenched fist up just now. Without hesitation, Yuri pulls out her knife from a spot inside of her jacket. This isn't the same knife she used when she came over to my house. The knife is smaller and more plain. I realize that this is this knife isn't part of her ornate collection. I can only assume she carries it with her and her sleeve wherever she goes. Before today, I would have asked what kind of pain she must feel every day to decide she has to decide she has to resort to that. <clears throat> But now, in my numb state, she also produces her first aid kit. 
She quickly removes a small cloth from the kit, as well as some disinfectant wipes and rubbing alcohol. She puts a small amount of alcohol on the cloth and wipes the blade of the knife clean. W what are you doing? Yuri looks at me with sadness in her eyes. You're hurting. Let me take care of you. Please. I don't entirely understand what she's doing, but... I know I want the plane, the pain to stop. I nod. I nod my head, and Yuri continues. She gently rubs one of the wipes across my palm on my hand. Again, I feel the familiar stinging sensation. Yuri then holds my hand open as she carefully scrapes the edges of the blade along ways across my, off, my, my palm. I'm a little afraid at first. But the way Yuri is holding the knife keeps it from cutting my hand. The blade dislodges some of the glass pieces as it passes. They fall on the floor like hardened teardrops. Yuri passes the blade over my hand three times. When she's finished, all but a few deeply embedded pieces of glass have been removed. Yuri puts the knife down and reaches for a kit. Oh, I'm out of bandages. Undaunted, she reaches down and tears a strip of cloth off the bottom of her skirt. She wraps the piece of cloth around my hand, tying it loosely over my palm. This should do until you can have your hand looked at. Yuri. When she's finished, she holds her hands for a moment above my head. She holds her hands for a moment above my hand. Slowly, she moves them towards my face. And, gently, places her hands on my cheeks. I make eye contact with Yuri and notice for the first time that she's crying. We sit and stare at each other for some time. Neither of us say a word. None are necessary. Finally, Yuri breaks the silence. You... you say you're broken. I'm broken too. You say you're weak. I know what weakness feels like. If you are spent, and if you have nothing left to give, then lean on me, and I'll lean on you, and together, perhaps, we could find a way to heal our broken spirits. For a second time in many days, time stands still between me and Yuri. I can almost feel the weight being taken from my shoulders. It's almost like we needed each other. If only for this moment. And from that day forward, for the rest of my life, I never felt more connected with another person as I did in that hallway. And it ends there, right? Two months! <laughs> Two months! Wow, that's a big... Slap across the face with a time jump? Holy crap! Monica and I sit in the club room alone together. It's been like this for some time now. Ever since the day of the festival, our club was said to be cursed. I don't know if the other students seriously believe that. But they, they'd have a good argument if they did. <laughs> Monica? Sorry, uh, I was just thinking. I really wanted to grow this club before I graduated. As a way to leave something behind, I guess. But now, with Sayori in the hospital, and Yuri's counsel at the counselor meetings half the time, and Atsuki, our literature club has practically become a literature duo. I guess things didn't work out the way I planned. Now, did they? Monica. I'm really sorry. I can't help but feel this is my fault. Don't blame yourself, Noodle Boy. You didn't cause anything. Sometimes life just isn't fair and there isn't anything you can do about it. Besides, I still have you. Monica smiles warmly at me. Noodle Boy? Um... The night on the beach two months ago. 
There's so much I want to. Oh, Yuri. Yuri. Mm. Annoying! <laughs> Yuri interrupted! Get out! Go away, Yuri. I want to hear what Monica has to say for once. Get out! Yuri had come over into the club room so quietly that neither of us even noticed her. <laughs> Hello, Monica. Noodle boy. Hello, Yuri. I'm glad to see you, but I thought you saw the counselor on Fridays. Normally I do, but I have a special session this weekend. So I was able to make it to the literature club today. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you here, Yuri. I'm really glad you could make it today, Yuri. Yuri glances at me and smiles. Ever since the day of the festival, Yuri and I haven't spoken much. She completely stopped coming to the literature club for about a month after. For the last month, however, she's been present about half the time. I know she's attending, uh, attending her counselor sessions, but I don't know if she's comfortable discussing them. I've been trying to keep the conversations light when we do talk. We've discussed books and poetry, and she seemed pleased when I finally finished the portrait of Markov, but we didn't but we haven't discussed anything deep since that day. How would you two like some tea? Yuri, I would never turn down any of your tea. Great. Noodle boy, would you mind helping me get the water? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, sure thing, Yuri. <laughs> Don't be long, you two. <laughs> no kissing in the hallway. <laughs> Yuri and I walk slowly down the hallway. Neither of us says anything. The air becomes somewhat heavy as the absence of the conversation becomes more and more apparent. We approach the water fountain and pass right on by as if we both understand that getting water for tea wasn't the point of this walk. We turn the corner into the next hallway, which is now deserted. I realize this is the place where I found Yuri during the festival two months ago. Noodle boy, there are so many things I want to say, and I'm slowly learning how to say them. Yuri looks at the floor for a moment, as if she's trying to collect her thoughts. I decide to help her out. Well, um, well, uh, this is, I didn't, I honestly expected the game to end after like the Yuri CG, but it's still going, so here we go, guys. <laughs> Well, why don't you start by telling me how your counseling sessions have been for the last two months? All right. Yuri takes a deep breath. As you know, I'm s I started seeing a counselor after the incident at the festival. After we talked for a while, he decided that I suffer from social anxiety disorder. I've always had trouble connecting with other people, but my condition means that I suffer from... in an inordinate amount of fear in regards to social situations. It's a type of phobia, like a fear of enclosed spaces or certain types of animals. Apparently, people with my condition tend to shut themselves off completely if they don't understand how to cope with the anxiety in a healthy manner. Yuri reaches up and rubs the top of her forearm. And it should be obvious that you... It should be obvious to you that it developed a coping habit that was anything but healthy. My counselor decided that on a number of treatments for me. First off, we mutually decided that I needed to get rid of my knife collection. I was using them to harm myself, and we both agreed that regardless of how well my treatment goes, having them there would be something of a temptation for me that I don't need. I need to look forward, not back. So I sold my knives to another collector. I admit I never understood the appeal of knives uh, that Yuri had, but I now, but I know how hard it must have been for get, rid <laughs> but I know how hard it would have been for me to get rid of my anime collection. I'm sorry, Yuri. I know how hard it must have been for you, but I'm proud of you doing it. Yuri smiles sweetly. Thank you. And it isn't so bad. I do feel like a small weight has been taken off me. I also think I may end up collecting spoons instead for <laughs> for tea. 
She giggles slightly at that. I'm not sure if she's serious or not, but I return a slight chuckle. <laughs> My counselor has also started a cognitive behavior therapy sessions with me. I'm learning healthier ways to cope with the fear I carry. I've been reciting some of my poetry to my counselor. Admittedly, that it has been fairly easy. Yuri looks away and blushes. When I, rec when I recite, I, I usually think of how easy it was to recite poems to you. I can feel my face flush with warmth. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> this is pretty spicy, guys. And lately, he's been pairing me up with a girl who has similar problems to me. She goes to a special school in another town. She was badly burned when she was a child, and her self-consciousness over her burns has made it difficult for her to interact with other people. This is a reference to Katawa Shoujo, and this is referencing Hanako, I think. Yuri again rubs her forearms. I guess she and I are both scarred. But our counselors thought it would be good for, the, for us to have group therapy together. Our first session was somewhat awkward. Neither of us spoke much. But slowly, we've opened up to each other. She's taught me how to play chess, and I've shown her the wonders of a good cup of tea. I feel like that I may have made a new friend. Yuri beams with pride. Oh, that's awesome, Yuri. You sound like you've made some great strides in these past few months. Yuri continues to smile at me. You've always been so kind and supportive, Noodle Boy. And that's why I feel I owe you an apology. Yuri, you don't need to apologize for anything. Yes, yes I do. When we met, I quickly developed feelings for you. I didn't completely understand those feelings. I'm still comprehending them, to be honest. But due to my lack of understanding, I placed you on a pedestal that was much too high for anyone to climb. I made you into the perfect version of what I wanted you to be, and that wasn't fair for either of us. And I'm truly sorry, sorry for that. Yuri, like I said, there's nothing to apologize for. I've also been coping with feelings that I don't understand. Sometimes I think if it had been less confused about those feelings a few months ago, everything would have... No, don't say that. Yuri quickly reaches out and takes my hand in hers. Her touch is more firm than it was before. I'm surprised by how much more confident she is now. She glances away for a moment and blushes, but <laughs> she doesn't remove her hand. I truly believe that our hearts beat in tandem. Ever since that special moment two months ago, I could believe nothing less. I don't know if that means that we're destined for each other, or if that means our path is simply crossed for now. But wherever your future holds, I'm a better person today because I've met you. Never forget that. Yuri's words touched me deeply. I never admit it out loud, but I'm actually fighting back tears. I can't cry, of course. I'm a man. <laughs> I have this tough guy image to maintain. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri releases my hand and reaches into her bag. She pulls out a package wrapped in blue paper. I don't feel this is the I don't feel that this is right in me to pursue. Personal man. I'm just so like focused on the situation that the writing and uh, me reading keeps getting distracted mid sentence. I don't feel that this is that it is right in me to pursue a closer relationship with the noodle boy. I'm finally learning who I am, and I feel that I have ways to go before I'm ready to ask that. But I don't want to be completely apart from you either. This Saturday, I'm going to be the beach to I'm going to the beach to be by myself. My counselor feels that it'll be a good exercise for me now that I have been progressing. I'm supposed to be alone to learn more about myself. But a slight grin spreads across Yuri's lips. I think a, I think I found a small way to cheat, as it were. At noon on Saturday, open that package and follow the instructions inside. I think you, you'll understand then. She hands me the package, and I agree to her terms. Noon Saturday, 
and not a moment before. Huh, okay. The rest of the day seems to drag on to Saturday morning. Normally, I'd be entertaining myself with the usual regimen of games and anime. But today, I'm too busy watching the clock. The hours tick away until it finally hits noon. I quickly tear open the package. Inside is a large book. On the cover is a woman in a Victorian dress standing in front of a large iron gate. It is night with a large full moon partially obscured by clouds. The title is written in large fancy silver letters. The Night and, Fur and the Fury. I flip over and I read the back. Apparently it is about a woman who resolves to break free of the restrictions of an overbearing 19th, sex 19th century society by joining up with a group of werewolf hunting vigilantes. <laughs> I open the cover and I follow a small note tucked inside. I open the note and I read it out loud. Needle boy, I feel that this book might have some parallels to my own journey. I will begin reading it on the beach at noon on Saturday. Won't you read it with me? Perhaps we can discuss it the next time we meet. Yuri. I chuckled to myself. <laughs> of course Yuri would pick a book like this. I start reading the first chapter, comforted in the knowledge that even though I may be Yuri and I be may be separated by distance, the space between us is never greater than the turn of a page. And that's where it's ending. That's where it's ending, right? He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalms 147.3 Oh, that's, that's so cool. I love that he put a verse in there. Oh, I love that. Dino, that's really nice. Oh, that was a really cool verse to end it on. I've actually read that verse before and it's nice seeing it again. End. Yeah, and that was cool. Okay. Not quite as emotional the first episode had me. Holy crap, that killed me. Ah! But this episode, I really liked it. You know, it, it, was, it was sad, but it was a good sad. It was a good type of sad. It wasn't like, I want to destroy your feelings sad like the, the other episode, but I enjoyed this one a lot. And Yuri's character. I appreciated that she annoyed me in some circumstances, but then she also felt bad about her issues and being like quick to judge and quick to jump into situations and act before she understands what she's doing. But yeah, that was really cool. Dino, I can't wait for episode three. I, I need it. I need it now. I need it. <laughs> but yeah, it was really fun. Thank you for making this. I, I'm really grateful that you're willing to make projects like this because it's a selfless thing. You're doing it for free and just for fun and for other people's enjoyment. And to me, that's that's really admirable. So, thank you guys so much for watching this series. Let me know down below what you thought. And if you guys would like to support the channel, um, there's a donation box in the description. But as always, um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Or in the next, another moment with you, Mud, which is going to be a little while, but hopefully it's soon. So, I'm going to miss this one, though. You know, I really enjoyed it. So, as always... I'll see you in the next one, and stay safe. <laughs>